Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our second game of the first series of the night. It will be between Keen Gaming and PSG LGD. It is of course MLP Dota, joined by the lovely John X Fire. John, a very unusually close game. Uh, we certainly weren't expecting that one. Game number two. What did Keen Gaming need to do differently PSG this time around? Well, they can't afford to, you know, they can't afford to make these small mistakes and give them away to LGD. LGD will take the inch you give and, you know, make it a mile. So you've got to be really careful. On the ground, you give away LGD. If you're going to try to dominate that early game, you've got to increase that net worth lead. Because at most, I think Keen was at most 5k ahead. That, that was it. And that was after several team fights as well. And for the most part, the game stuck to that. 1 to 2k advantage fairly close with King Gaming's draft wanting to have that early lead because their draft just came online for the early game. So it didn't quite work out in the end. Just one small mistake, one bad team fight, and LGD just took it away from them. Really interesting draft so far, Mike. And LGD had first pick. Rubik wasn't banned. And they go for the Dazzle. Hmm. It's uh, somewhat unusual because we've seen plenty of PSG LGD games where they... They have the access to Dazzle, but they just don't seem to prioritize it whatsoever. However, this might be that game where they like to start experimenting. It always does seem to be like the second game in the series where they start to play around with the new patch a bit. Though Keen Gaming, they do open up with the Shadow Shaman and the Brewmaster. Dude, I don't know if you read, but the Brewmaster was reworked again today. It made me it made me kind of sad. Fire Element thing is gone. Just just no more Fire Element. When you take 80 spell damage, that's when it refreshes. I'm like, but it it was so it was funny. It was funny Five seconds because uh, you know, I just like that one little note for Fire Element. And apparently, um, you know, for those not aware, PSG um, Brewmasters. For, for the fire element thing, Axe's battle hunger counted as fire. Just interesting to think about. Just just ponder upon that, Mike. Well, nevertheless, John, it has been changed to be more simple to use, I feel. Like, the Brewmaster uh, was already good. And then yeah. And then it's kind of like, you know what, let's just make it a bit simpler. Because, you know, people, in, like, especially in pubs, you're not going to think about, like, oh, who's fire element? You know, like, we're not playing Pokemon. For the love of God, John, cut it out. So it is. It, I feel like it is a straight-up buff to Brewmaster. That pretty much means you don't really need to worry about that in your draft. You can refresh the proc of that without worrying about what here's to pick up. So it is fairly... It, it does make Brewmaster a bit better in general use. LG does pick up that Rubik, Mike. Mm. So not the first pick, but second pick. And they grab it up. It's a... Fairly solid group game again. The Shadow Shaman, all the spells are pretty good to steal the Brewmaster as well. And if there's one guy who can steal that primal split, it's going to be FY. Oh, yeah. I do love seeing it. Of course, we do see this the uh, Chalice Sanking ban. I feel like it's very smart on King Gaming's part to get rid of it. Although, you've got to admit, Chalice did not have the greatest game uh, in the first game. I mean, it was very un... It felt like everyone was just having a bad game. It was very unusual. Um... But, you know, we all have those off games. We'll see if they do turn around game number two. More importantly, though, if we could please go back to this Dazzle pick. I think the beauty of this, John, is we don't actually know whether they're going to run X Nova Support Dazzle or whether they're going to run a Core Dazzle yet. Yeah, I'm interested to see if they try to experiment with that Core Dazzle again. We've seen teams try it to, uh, I have to say, pretty... Pretty abysmal results, I have to say, so far. The Core Dazzle, not exactly working out. You'd figure, with that CDR talent, you would be able to maximize your Necrobox and Midas. But for the most part, I don't recall the Core Dazzle actually going Midas, Mike. It's it's mainly been that Necrobook rush. And it just feels underwhelming, right? Um, it gets really broken, of course, once you hit that 50% CDR, where for your items, uh, that's 50% off, you know, downtime for your... Necrobooks, and you can push quite fast. You have an insane amount of healing and ridiculous uptime on your shallow grave, especially with an Agnimus. But we've never seen it reach that point in the game so far. They've either ended too fast or the Dazzle just gets too starved by late game. We'll see. I, I do want to see the Core Dazzle tried one more time. Just once. Let's, let's see it one more time. 
Mind you, John, I have been playing a lot of support Daz on this new patch, and I can tell you that it is rather effective. Uh, again, though, this is a pro game, completely different to pubs, so we can't expect, you know, we can't expect LGD to put on my level of performance, John. That's that's unreasonable, but which you know, it, it should be fine though. LGD, if they do want to run it as a support, that cooldown reduction is very very effective. It definitely is. Uh, it does a lot for you. Uh, again, that healing, you can pump out constantly with enough levels in it, and that bad juju. I just feel like, at least in DPL, we have not seen it to great effect. And, and just this isolation. Uh, team Gaming, they go for a hero. I absolutely love my Phantom Assassin. Just able to eat right through that Rubik, able to eat right through that Dazzle. The issue is, of course, that Shallow Grave is going to be annoying to deal with. Mm. But if you get a lucky dagger crit, I guess you don't need to worry about that. Absolutely. It is certainly the case. Uh, it's really just mean. always funny seeing those daggers fly out and just someone disappears. It's always a treat to watch that happen. We'll I enjoy it, Mike. LGD. They do respond with the Centaur War Runner. So I, I do believe, unless it's going to be a position four, which it could be, I do believe that will be a Chalice War Runner. We're gonna be we're gonna be able to see. Um, I, I guess not a bad pick, John. It was buffed today. The stampede now offers a longer duration slow, so that is a, a very very minimal buff, but a buff nonetheless. It's gonna be interesting to see. I feel like there is that flexibility. I think we've seen. No, I'm not. I can't quite recall well if we've seen some teams try to run a support centaur or if their center was just really that starved that felt like one but there is a little bit of flexibility coming out from lgd's draft they could try something funky with um a support centaur along with the dazzle on core or they just go with something a bit more standard i do like this in response of course to the pa you're going to be able to reflect quite a fair bit of damage back and you should be able to nuke her down that early game you can pump it out really with double edge and the stacks of retaliate and PA does not have the healthiest HP pool, so you do have to watch out now as Keen. They go for the Warlock next, which, I mean, he did get buffed for the laning phase with, you know, with his chain not ignoring units in fog. I'm still skeptical in this pick. I believe we've seen it once, and I can't recall if it worked out, Mike. Oh, it got destroyed, John. Got absolutely destroyed. That was the uh, that was the game again against PSG LGD. I can't remember. I think it was KG Luminous that was playing them with this. All oh, right, right. And right. we were just talking about how greedy that draft was, and then they proceeded to get destroyed in like what was it, like sixteen minutes or something? I think was it the sixteen minute one or twelve minute one? No, I, I, I don't. Two know. really short games, <laughs> <laughs> but one of those two. And honestly, I not see the value in this warlock pick. You're going all in in your control with the Shadow Shaman and Brewmaster when he has his ult up. You're going to have to play around that cooldown. His laning is kind of atrocious now. Like, like to be frank, Warlock does not zone people out too well. I mean, Dazzle almost does the same thing. Damage with a nuke. Uh, heal with a nuke. And pretty decent slow as well. That doesn't depend on you channeling it. And a saving mechanic in, of course, Shallow Grave. Overall, just comparing... Dazzle to Warlock, you all could get a bit more value from Dazzle compared to Warlock. You don't need to play around a ridiculous, like, ridiculously long cooldown as well. LGD does close it out with Dragonite. I feel like that's a good option. Again, these are all really tank heroes that are hard for PA to burst down, which is fair enough response. And, you know, they're not as reliant on long cooldowns. I mean, you have to rely on, again, that split from Brewmaster, the Warlock Golem drop, and the wards from Shadow Shaman. It's fairly heavy in that department, Mike. Yeah, I, I think another point that I, I don't think you mentioned, John, the, the thing with that Warlock fourth pick as well, you're going to give a Golem now that Rubik can steal. And I don't believe it's a very hard ability to steal either. So It's definitely not. It's, it's one of those things. Like, it wasn't such a powerful pick to begin with. Uh, I guess the, the whole thing, the consensus here is... Fatal Bonds with PA crit is going to destroy a team, which is fair enough, but that's on paper. Oh, yeah. When it comes it, to reality. It, it's a bit of a one-trick pony as well, this, this kind of draft. 
we've seen that happen before with a real emphasis on, you know, just focusing on amping up that tag team before. And when you go with these one-dimensional drafts, I feel like it has a lot of issues and a lot of holes you can really exploit. Mm. Especially, you know, for a team like LGD, to give them, uh, to, to try to draft a very strong, but, you know, one-dimensional sort of strategy. It's probably not the best idea. Of course, I feel like Keen Gaming's draft is still pretty good. They really need something great to close it out. Well, Juggernaut will come out for LGD. Now, John, they don't have the Magnus with them. So you won't have the uh, the bonus of having an Empower to really speed up that farm and damage. It kind of begs the question, like, what item build do you go on Juggernaut now? Because, I don't know, with, without that cleave... It just feels like he farms so slowly in comparison to other other carries that you see. Hmm, I'm interested to see if you can still go for Mask of Madness, especially with a change to Omni Slash. So that added attack speed, if you're popping it during Omni Slash, it could come in handy a lot. Of course, Mask of Madness is also a farm acceleration tool, so that is very plausible, I feel, for Omni to go for if he does opt for that. Otherwise... I would blame him for going for the Battle Fury. I don't think it's amazing on Chug, I have to say. I feel like if you're going to go for a farm item, you are really going to benefit from that Mask of Madness a bit more. If that is what uh, Ami opts for. Of course, you're still going to see the standard item build coming out with rate bands as well. On another, on another note, what, what are those cosmetics on the Warlock? My that goodness. is the Ultra Rare that came out from... Something at TI, I forget which bundle. It's really nice, Mike. It's uh, oh, it's too fantastic. bad it's ultra rare, of course. Um, uh... Oh, so you like just never get it? Like, oh, yeah. you have to spend like $1,000 to get it? Uh, I've seen people spend right, right around $800 to try to get it. Yeah. It does look fantastic, nice though. Oh, it, it's absolutely beautiful. And I think the beauty of it is that you don't see Warlock's face. That's why it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Not the prettiest guy around, you have to admit. He really let himself go, but anything in the name of the ancient smite, I believe. Absolutely. Well, we'll get into the game very, very soon. Of course, we did see the Ember Spirit final pickup. Uh, it's not much, too much to talk about with him, although his sleight of fist did receive a buff today. So it does produce some more damage. And people were questioning, is it going to be the meta where you see Ember Spirit going back to the physical style builds? Which I personally miss quite a lot. I do miss it. Like, that was the Ember, you know, that I played a lot of. Um, right when he was released, of course, that was the emphasis on his physical build. The magic build is, I mean, it's amazing. It's great. It does a lot of damage. It comes online fast. You, you don't really need to invest as hard. It... There's just something satisfying about killing everyone in a cleave, you know? It, it's, it's just satisfying and kind of sadistic. Yeah. I'm not sure if Embers will focus on that. I feel like it's a mix, right? You're still going to go for those cheap items in the mid-game. You're still going to go for the Maelstroms, I think. That's definitely still something Embers want to get. Maybe the drums as well. Just value stat items. Especially with a change to Remnant where you do damage while flying. I, I think the magic build does still have some merit here, Mike. Certainly so. Definitely has not been removed in any sense of the word. It will, of course, be a support dazzle. I mean, I probably didn't need to point that out, but that is the case. <laughs> Arme will be on the Juggernaut, and again, we'll keep close. We'll keep a close eye on Arme because I am very curious to see what kind of item build he'll go. We're just so used to seeing the Magnus Jug coming out together. It's just. Will he go for the Battle Fury? Will he go for a Mask of Madness? Or will he just go for the, the Sanjin Yasha Rush? Though I gotta say, going for the Sanjin Yasha Rush, it just doesn't feel fast enough. Like, the, the, the power that you get from that item is great, but it just feels like you keep farming so slowly in comparison to maybe getting... just having that cleave ability with this hero. Definitely so. Uh, oh, FTO yeah, is already in trouble. He's copying a lot of damage. See Arme trying to help out Xnova. He'll be fine though. Arme now is going to be the one in trouble. They have no shackles to hold him in place. And it looks like that'll be the end of that one. And for the moment, I was going to say they were running a tri lane, but it looks like Dark is going to move his way down bot slowly but surely. And now he'll go for the TP. Hmm. 
fairly even trades so far at the very least. You know, no first blood yet. Although this looks like it's going to be a bit of a rough time for Ami up top lane. Aka is really just zoning out X Nova very hard right now. John, why is there a bounty rune still at top? You know what? I I wish I could tell you, Mike, but it looks like in all this excitement you've forgotten about it. <laughs> just way too much excitement right now. Who cares about the bounty rune, Mike? Uh, You're creeps to farm. I feel like it's pretty important, John. But Well, apparently not for these two teams, Mike. Nope, and they know better than you. That is true. <laughs> that is definitely true. There you have it, guys. When you're in your pubs, leave the top left banner room on the radiant side. <laughs> Just leave it alone. I'm sure there's something that, that gives you an advantage if you do do so. Anyway. Top lane. Again, like you mentioned, they are getting heavily beaten down by the side of Keen Gaming. X Nova seems to be the main priority right now, and he's only got one Tango left as well on this Dazzle. So, Dazzle, so this doesn't well, it doesn't give you much faith in the Dazzle pickup as a support right now, because it's just in fact he might just be dead. Have they got Shackles yet? He is level two, but Kaka does not level up yet. He holds on to that skill point. A poison Touch comes in, and now the spin comes out, and Kaka's just gonna die. You've just achieved. Well, that was very. Keen of him being that far forward, but applying the harass. And, you know, he was applying the harass, but you were in range for everything. You know, uh, you do not underestimate Juggernaut's damage output with Blade Fury. And you cannot understate the damage coming out from Poison Touch as well. It's a really good combo, Jug Dazzle, because that slow is going to make sure that you're going to die to the spin. So you do have to watch out. Although Kaka is trading again with X Nova, and I think that's it for X Nova. He's going to have to go home at some point or figure out some regen. It's funny too, it felt like they could have just killed him off. If they had Shackwood X Nova right then and there, you would have had enough time for the Brewmaster to come in and get one or two right clicks and finish the job. Especially because he can use that Drunken Brawler, but it seems like they prefer him to be alive. But we'll see. Kaka, again going on to Arme. The old 11 is there to help out this time around, just in case. Looks like things will just get back to the farm game at top lane. X Nova actually not backing off at all. He's got brown boots now. He feels a bit more confident and he'll just keep throwing out the uh, the, the shadow wave to heal, heal himself and Arme up. I suppose that's fair enough. He does want some XP. He wants to get pretty good levels up so he can have his entire kit ready. Of course, I think you really start to see Dazzles come online by level 4. That is when you have significant output and utility. So he will want to reach that point fairly quick. Yeah. Look at the other lanes though. Mid lane, you look at Somnus. He's up against that Ember Spirit. And of course, as expected, the DK probably just not going to die. And both sides really just going to start trading farm. Although Army again apparently finds Kaka with that spin. Not respecting how much damage it does, especially at that level 2 mark. Now, Old Eleven will try and go for a bit of a trade, but he cops more damage from Army than he does himself. That's probably because he didn't really proc the Drunken Brawler for that right-click trade. Yeah, this top lane is... I feel like it's not working out too well for King Gaming. Kaka. That is really far forward for Kaka. Yeah, he goes for the Shackle. The spin's available, though, and Arme is just going to take his life. But, oh, in fact, he's not... X Nova probably wasn't expecting that. He will find the trade, but Old Eleven gets a double kill. Well, that's that's what you want to see from Keen Gaming. Um, good start to them. It, it, it bounces back. That's 1k gold on Old Eleven now in the bank, and that opens up a lot of possibilities for him to build up. Yeah. Mid lane as well. FY, he made a rotation in, and they do end up killing off that Ember Spirit. I really was not expecting Arme to cop that much damage, but that is the power of that Drunken Brawler, John. It's just, those crits that come out, you really do underestimate how much damage it does until it's too late. It's it's pretty dumb as well, like 80%. You're, you're really just more... I mean, it's almost 100%, right? It, it's, it might as well be, for the most part, while you're experiencing it. There was a bit of a scuttle at that bot lane. Old Chicken, he does bounce and get himself a bounty rune. Does come a bit of harassment because of it, but he'll be fine. Does actually salve up now. 
again, I, I do wonder what are the builds on this Jug and PA. Unfortunately, we're probably only going to find out in 5 or 10 minutes or so, so we do have to wait that out. So Ame again, going on to Kaka bot lane. The Poison Touch is there as well, and Kaka, I don't know if he'll die from this. It looks like he'll be alright. The Hex does come out, but no, X Noble will find the final right click. And he will get the kill onto that Shadow Shaman once again. Yeah, pretty topsy-turvy here at top lane. They had a nice trade earlier, but it's just as easy for LGD to get the jump on them as well. Although I feel like they are a bit more mana limited on LGD's side. They do have to pop a pang Mango on Ame and constant stream of salves on Xnova. I mean, sorry, Clarities on Xnova just to maintain that harass output for him. I just love the fact, John, I'm looking at Somnus right now. He's gone three braces. And I just love the fact that he's got almost 1.6k HP at level 6. Like, how do you even kill this man right now? Like, the Ember Spirit runs in, gets the chains, you know, gets the Flame Guard off as well, and just nothing happens. Uh, Brewmaster, old 11, will end up falling top lane. X Nova again, finding himself another kill on this Dazzle. John, he's 4-1 to one right now with one assist. It's a really good start for X Nova, and really good rotations coming out from FY. Once again, going to that top lane, he's just very active in this map. Going where he needs to be and applying the pressure. You know, Chalice can end up losing his own life though. Again, he will find Kaka of all people. The Shadow Shaman respawns, ends up dying. 0 to 5 now on the Shadow Shaman, unfortunately. And old 11 as well up top. Yep. Falling quite low. He's being dived right now. And FY, well, they can't really finish him off yet. Now the chains do come out into FY and the rotations from Dark. Why just going to run his way out. No mana for chains available right now, and it looks like that'll be the end of that. The old 11 is still on the run. X-Nova on the chase. Won't actually go for the deny on the neutrals. He's going to turn around. X-Nova will not end up falling. That heal was there just in time. Nice attempt, though. Very good attempt. Um, it was almost a bit scary. Like, if you got one auto attack off, and if... You know, if the two heroes weren't there to support him with that wave, it might it might have been enough. He might have been able to sneak that extra auto attack and taken out X Nova, but fortunately for him, he just kills the bear again and he just respawned while well like oh. Top lane FY nice. will end up falling. Old Chicken does end up rotating now. They want to go into X Nova, ignoring Arme for the moment. It does, however, mean that that bot lane is going to be pushed in by Somnus and Chalice. And with that Elder Dragon form, it won't last very long at all. Yeah, so that's going to be a tier 1 going away of LGD. 8 minutes in, and Ame also just TPs out. Going to apply some pressure here, get some lane farm, and start draining that Radiant Jungle for himself. Oh. Nice deny coming out from Kaka at that top lane, but there were no heroes anyway. But that does mean that all your out of towers now on the side of King Gaming are down. And this is at the eight and a half minute mark. The top lane is well, X Nova moving in. He will spot our Kaka TPing out and Old Chicken's the only one left. Fantastic timing coming out of LGD. Like literally as he's TPing out, they will rotate in though FY does end up losing his own life it seems at that bot lane. Still five to 10, 4K net worth lead now for LGD. Very good start for LGD. They've already taken out three towers. I mean, that's uh, all the tier ones gone for Keen Gaming. Just in the snap like that, and we're going to start applying pressure in these tier twos already. The dragon form is back up. Just beautiful timings coming out for LGD. Yeah, Somnus with these three braces, he's just been roaming around. He hasn't gone back to base, John. He's literally just been roaming around lane to lane, and now the stun will come out onto the Brewmaster. The follow up is there, the old chicken. Doesn't really crit Chalice much. He doesn't seem to care at the moment. Pretty tanky with that double bracer and the Vanguard. Now they hold him in place. I don't know if they can actually burst him down. Chalice, he's still going through this. Hoof Stomp is there. Now X Nova is there to help out. Though no Shallow Grave available. And that does mean they'll finally get the Centaur. I mean, now, can they get the DK? Probably not. Somnus will get the start off. And I don't like this trade coming out if the, if the Brewmaster does end up dying, and he does. Somnus ends up getting a dominating spree now, and he's looking for even more. Though, they will back off on the side of King Gaming. I think one thing you have to remember when you're trying to jump Somnus is that those three bracers, Mike, give you 18% magic resistance. 
18%. What's your damage output right now? It's gonna be, you know, Ying on that Ember who's just looking for Ami now. Does find it, but their main damage output to really deal with everything is this Ember Spirit at this point. PA is not quite in line yet. You are gonna be relying on Ember's magic damage and the Bracer Shriek. The Bracer Shriek used it by so much. It's pretty fantastic to see, I've got to be honest, like, just these simple items make such a difference in this patch. Look at, look at Somnus, he's so confident right now, like, he does not care how many heroes they have behind that 2-2 tower. He's got Elder Dragon form in 15 seconds. He's just gonna go at it again. He's looking for a very quick game, it seems. They're gonna TP Karka down. FY is there, still no level 6 on FY though, so he can't even spell still at the moment. Stampede now comes in. They are going to make the jump onto Kaka though. Golem has been dropped. Will it mean anything? Not for the moment though. The upheaval is slowing them down. X Nova is going to be the target in the back lines and they will find him. Though the tier 2 has fallen. Now FY will be the target. They do get the chains off and he's down as well. And everyone is so slow. Like look at Chalice right now. He's moving like an absolute turtle because of that upheaval from Dark. And well, with time they'll be able to take him out. They will get him eventually. A nice bunch of pickoffs for the side of King Gaming. I mean, three for nil is really good. They only, they do lose their tier two, but I guess that's worthwhile with all the kills you're getting now. It's it's getting a bit scary with the amount of map control you are losing out to. Again, um, you don't want your map to be that dark. You do need some space for your Ember Spirit to farm. Your PA as well you need to play some catch up, especially since you're working on that quick battle fury. Oh, why? He went for the uh, went for the invis rune, and he he did lift up the golem. He does pay for it with his life. Bit of a mistake coming out from this Rubik. Ying will capitalize. Oh, Parker. Yeah, gets caught out. Arm eight. Though there are some rotations to try and help him out. Shrine committed, but it doesn't help. Omni slash just comes off cooldown. The TP attempts. Arm eight. The shallow graves there. X Nova may die, but. It's a support for a support trade. They're not going to mind this. Definitely not. And that's a few TPs wasted as well. So that option's not going to be there if they apply pressure in other parts of the map for LGD. So I'd say that's worthwhile overall. Um, not too much you lose by trading your Dazzle away, really. And you really keep Kaka's Shadow Shaman down. It's 13 minutes in, Mike. He's just about to hit level 6. Yeah, it's it's not going well. That's for sure, like, Kaka. I mean, mind you, FY hasn't been having the best game either. He's currently 0-4 to with 5 assists. Is at that level 7 mark, though, which is a big difference, I suppose, in comparison. And it looks like they will go for a smoke attempt on LGD now. Mid lane will be the target. And it is old 11. No mana for Primal Split if he wanted to try and get away, although... He does back off at the right time, and now a counter smoke coming out. Chalice, though, will break it. With that, it looks like both teams probably just going to leave each other alone. It does set up quite well for LGD to push this tier 2, though. They do have the high grounds welcome down here. Chalice. Moving forward, he wants to protect his team while they're taking that tier 2 tower, though the wards have been dropped. He will just stampede through them, though, and again... They will go straight after this Shaman. Now FY, he got the shackles off as well. Who does he go for? The Brewmaster is the target. Though no, Golem does come out in time. And it is a one-for-one -one trade for the moment. Though Kaka has bought back. And it looks like they will go after Somnus on that DK. He is really, really tanky. And he's actually making a run for it now. Arme, meanwhile, trying to get the tie back onto Kaka. Will he be successful? Not quite yet. The Hex is there, though. Omni Slash will get the job done. Meanwhile, FY is still alive. He actually steals the split. He does get the split off in time before dying. And now he's going after Old Chicken. Arme is still alive. The Shadow Word is there. And, well, it looks like Keen Gaming probably going to fall apart here. Four heroes down. For the Radiant side. Uh, I don't know if I can blame him, John. <laughs> FY, just to end it. Steals those spirits. Mike, 14 minutes. 14 minutes, 57 seconds. After a really close game one for LGD, they come back at it and just show us why they're number one in China. Yeah. The thing was, John, and we can have a look at it now in the uh, the after game graphs, but you look at the build that Old Chicken was going for, he was indeed going for a Battle Fury. 
takes now when, too long. When you're up against a DK that's or that looked unkillable, and he was. He's seven zero with two assists. Somnus did not die, right? Like going for a battle fury when you've lost your all your tier one towers in within five minutes, and then you're losing tier twos around that eight minute mark or seven or eight minutes. Like the battle fury was never going to be good. I mean, that is what we've seen most PAs go for, but. I feel like, yeah, definitely Old Chicken did need to come online a bit earlier in this game. I mean, he was stuck with just those items. Just the Perseverance and two Wraith Bands it was never going to be enough. And LGD just applied way too much pressure. I mean, what can you say? That was 14 minutes, 57 seconds, Mike. Yeah. After a really close game again, game one was much closer with a much smaller net worth lead. Now it's, it ended just way too fast. Nevertheless, again, LGD will go on undefeated in this group stage. And, I mean, I should mention, while we've got a slight break right now, this will be the final day of group stages for a while for the DPL. They'll come back on the 7th of December. So, we, I mean, we won't be here to cast that because I'll be a, casting a LAN in Melbourne. But still, we won't see these teams again for a while. In fact, I believe... And I'm just double-checking now, but PSG LGD, after this series, has no more left. That is it yeah. for their group stage. They're undefeated. They're top of the group. Uh, and they probably will just remain top of the group because everyone else has lost the series or lost the game at the very least. So there you have it. Of course, LGD, uh, I don't want to unexpectedly made it to the playoffs already. <laughs> That'll be it for them. The next series, however, John, KGL versus E-Home. Having a look at the group standings, E-Home is currently second in their group. Obviously, they want to secure that by winning this series. Now, KG Luminous, they are in the third place. They've had two ties and one loss. They really need to try and get some wins under their belt, I feel, uh, to be able to secure their playoff, uh, playoff bracket spaces. Otherwise, well, you never know who's going to come out on top and just take it off you. Nevertheless, John, we'll be right back in just a moment to see how the second series of the night will pan out between KG Luminous and E-Home. Thanks to the viewers that have tuned in and are watching. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. We'll be back in just a moment. 